and welcome to another episode of Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. And today's episode is going to be about sports hypnosis and why it can be very effective for your game or for your team. So stay tuned. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank everyone that's left their reviews on iTunes or Google Play or whatever medium that you listen to this podcast. It warms my heart. It gives me the nice set of the tingles and feels that you are listening, that you are loving, that you are sharing, that you are commenting. I put out these podcasts and all the videos and blog posts I put out there for free and they will always be free. As long as you listen, as long as you subscribe, as long as you enjoy those and we continue to grow this audience. And all I ask for you is if you do like them, like them, share them, comment on them, leave your five star reviews. And that will motivate me, inspire to put more beautiful, wonderful, powerful content to help you transform your life with edge. And also to sweeten the deal, uh, when you do leave a review on uh, your platform then please take a screenshot of it and send me a uh, send it to me in an email at mail m-a-i-l at lukenosis l-u-k-e n-o-s-i-s dot com mail at lukenosis dot com and we'll book you a complimentary 30 minute unstuck um, breakthrough session with myself now this is not a therapy session this is not a hypnosis session this is not about me listening to you bitch and complain about why your life is so tough it's simply you saying hey luke here's what i want to get in my life but i'm a little bit stuck in this area and we strategically come up with some concepts to help you to come unstuck so you can transcend to the next area of your life free of charge just shoot me an email um but now on with the show so sports hypnosis well what is it well it's hypnosis for sports to make you better at sports whether that be mixed martial arts whether that be football whether that be hockey basketball wrestling whatever it may be now tiger woods i'm not sure if you're familiar with tiger woods i'm sure you are but in his autobiography tiger woods talks about having a caddy his actual caddy was a hypnotist and his caddy i believe worked with him from about the age of 10 to about the age of 28 i do believe and tiger woods credited a lot of his caddy for giving him a lot of the mental skills and mental edge to help him get to the next level and interesting about it is when tiger woods his career started to hit the shit so to speak and he started to have all the problems with his wife and having sex and having affairs with porn stars god bless him it was around about the same time that he fired his um caddy of many many years which is which is very interesting Steve Collins, a famous Irish boxer who beat Nigel Benn and uh, beat Chris Eubanks and, and many others in the mid-90s. I remember there being a big story that when he was fighting Chris Eubank, who was a famous super middleweight uh, British boxer, very, um, a very interesting character, a very charismatic, flamboyant character, a bit eccentric. And the uh, front page nudes of the newspapers in England was Chris Eubank called Steve Collins a cheat because he's using a hypnotist. And I remember reading this, I'm like, as a, as, like a, as a young teenager, I'd be like, wow, this, uh, so a hypnotist could make, if there are two boxers that were of the, pretty much the same level, but if the hypnotist hypnotized one of them, he could give that other hypnotist the edge that he would be, he would not be able to be knocked out and he would knock out his opponent and he'd be impervious to pain and stuff like that. And that later I realized that's not quite how hypnosis worked, but I thought, wasn't that interesting? And I know of some hypnotists who claim to be working with NBA players uh, in helping them with their game. So hypnosis is amazing for many, many different things. Well, but how does it make you a better sports person? Does that mean, Luke, that if I've never done a sport before and I'm hypnotized, i.e. I've never played tennis before, but I have a session, an hour session with a hypnotist. And he says, Luke, you are going to be the best tennis player in the world. You're going to be better than John McEnroe and Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. And you're going to play them and you're going to beat them. And then I go out there and I play them with no skills, with, with not actually practicing this in the real world at all, not doing any of the traditional ways to develop my skill. Am I going to beat them? No, I'm going to get killed. Um, <laughs> but what it means is if you've already got the skills in that particular area and you are doing the activities day to day to get better, whether it's hitting the ball um, in tennis, whether it's rolling on the mat for mixed martial arts, whether that's on the ice for hockey or on the field, with football yeah you're actually practicing it you're doing it but it's about that mental edge 
I'll tell you why I believe sports hypnosis is most powerful. It's when an athlete hits a tries to hit a ball in, say, golf and misses it. It's when the boxer throws his best shots and his opponent is still standing in front of him. It's when the football player is exhausted and has nothing left, but there's still 30 minutes on the clock. It's when the mixed martial artist is held up against the cage and he's fighting for dear life to stay up there. And he realizes that there's another four minutes left on the clock before he gets a moment's rest. I believe it's in that moment when, when it's two somewhat equally skilled athletes are out there. It's the one with the strongest mind who is the best. And, and to define that a little bit more, what I mean by the strongest mind, it's, it's the person that does take that big shot. But rather than it's like, oh my God, I've been, sh I've been hit in the face and all oh, that really hurt. Straight away can snap back into with their game plan. It's the tennis player who has lost, who's lost some points, is, is down some points. But rather than going on that downward spiral of like, oh no, I've just missed the last two shots. And then getting angry about it and then taking them off the ball and missing the next shot. Or being anxious that they won't get the next shot and being a bit gun shy. It's like, it's like okay, yeah, I missed that last ball. I missed that last shot. I missed that last punch, that last block, whatever it is, that last uh, volley. And then straight back into the game, straight back into executing their plan with the emotion taken out of it. Because they say in in sports, oftentimes, especially combat sports, but this is a metaphor that you can use for all kind of sports. If you can get your opponent to be angry or scared of you, scared of you then you, you've won. If you're two similarly equal opponents, two similarly equal teams, if you can make your opponent or opponent scared or angry and you're equally skilled, you can win because their emotions come out and it starts to cloud the athletic ability. Because when athletes are at their best, it's because they're often in a place called their flow state. And the flow state is when you're not five minutes in the past, you're not 20 minutes into the future, you're right there and you're not thinking about thinking about things you are just moving you are just in the flow and it's that time when you don't even think you're consciously thinking at all it's just you're flowing you're responding to the ball coming at you you're responding to allowing that punch to go past your head and and just um passing it to one side blocking it to one side it's when you've got that ball and seemingly you're going around your opponent on the football field it's when you're in that flow state where you're just there, where you're doing that, doing that thing that you're great at. You're not in the future. You're not in the past. You're right there in that very moment doing your skill set that you've drilled over and over again. And the reason you drill techniques, you drill formations, you drill punches, you drill your skills over and over again is so when it comes to match day, when it comes to fight day, when it comes to game day, you don't need to think about it anymore because there's probably nothing else that someone's going to give you on that last day or hour before your game, your fight, your match um, that you're going to be able to utilize out there anyways. You've either got it at that point or you don't got it and you just have to accept I've got it and go and play or fight your heart out in that particular time. So flow state is very, very important for sports hypnosis and um, being able to take your emotions out of it. And also using things like anchor, which come from NLP, which originally not come from NLP at all. They came from Pavlov's work, um, anchoring, anchoring good emotional states. So if you are in the middle of your game, your match, your fight, and you are going into an unresourceful state, there's a quick movement you can do with your body that stimulates a more positive response, a more positive emotional state, even if that's neutrality, to get you back in the game. It can be um, doing a universal OK sign of, of linking, touching your tip of your index finger and your thumb together and linking that to just feeling a time when you were totally successful and multiple times building that as a resource anchor so when you link that enough of thinking that thought getting that feeling making that unique touch of for example again index finger tip of your thumb it creates an anchor so in the middle of your game your fight your sport you fire that off 
and a conditioned response comes in and you start to feel that emotion even though a moment ago you may have been in a unresourceful emotion so sports hypnosis is is very very powerful very very vital it never takes the place of skills it never play play takes the place of drilling the techniques you need to learn of course we've already addressed that but if it's two equal teams two equal athletes the one that has that mental game that's going to win it's that one that can keep them in that flow state in that moment that's probably going to win if they're equal it's the one that even though they miss that shot even though they miss that punch even though they miss that goal they can immediately let, let that go and continue to use their game plan and put that into practice also breath oftentimes you know different emotions will affect our breath if we're anxious we tend to breathe a little bit higher in the chest when we're more more relaxed when we're more sleepy when we're more chilling we might breathe more from our lower stomach but breath is so important as well and actually visualization visualization whether you want to call it meditation whether you want to call it self-hypnosis or visualization don't give it a name at all really although there is a name but you kind of know what i mean um there's not a whole bunch of people about somebody making a whole bunch of money from visualization and calling it visualization and saying they created it but there are people that say they create the other things and make a shitload of money like law of attraction but that's another topic for another day but visualizing visualizing what you want not what you don't want so if you visualize what you don't want you end up attracting more of that into your life law of attraction if you believe in such a thing but when you start to and they've done scientific studies that people that have visualized what they want over and over again have made it as vivid as real as is possible they've seen it and in turn they've heard it inside and they've felt it they've used all those sub modalities over and over again a lot of athletes will tell you well, i saw myself winning the stanley cup thousands of thousands of times i saw myself winning the ufc title hundreds of thousands of times before i do it i saw myself breaking the uh 40 meter sprint thousands of thousands of times and this was just my, my unconscious mind already knew because what happens is your unconscious mind some people got the subconscious some people got the reptile mind some people got the monkey mind some people got the five-year-old inside it's all the same thing in, in in my metaphor is your unconscious mind does not know the difference between something which is real and something that is vividly imagined it shoots off the same hormonal responses and neurochemistry in the brain an example of this is you're watching a movie a horror movie in the comfort and safety of your own home and um you know the the monster jumps out and then you jump out and, and you get scared even though you know it's not real because it's on a flat screen tv it's not even 3d you cheap bastard I mean, you know it is not real yet you still have that reaction because you're unconscious or and also your amygdala the part of your brain that's responsible for your emotions does not know the difference between something which is real and something which is vividly imagined so if you vividly imagine what you don't want guess what you have have a chemical reaction to it in your body so you may as well get a chemical reaction for imagining the things that you do want because you're more inclined to code that more into your neurology so visualize what you want visualization in sport in whatever you do is very very powerful I remember as a youngster I had a whole bunch of goals um, that I wanted and I wrote them all on my wall all right that's another part of self-hypnosis and it is not just self-hypnosis but i put my goals on my wall and i visualized what i wanted and um this was like back 20 years ago and about 10 years 10 11 years later i'd found some of the papers and the per there was specifically it was a person that i wanted wanted to create a specific girl if you will it sounds a bit like weird science that i wanted to attract into my life with a certain name with a certain look even down to the tattoos uh, that i wanted to, her to have and i completely forgot about it and i was dating this girl for a while for a few years and um i remember finding these sheets i'm like shit I've completely forgot about this, but I, I, I dug them up. I'm like, it has the name. <laughs> it has the same type of tattoo, same kind of shape, um, from the same kind of 
country with the same type of hobbies and it was the same type of look and I completely forgot about it but my unconscious didn't forget about it and seeing it every day or written on a wall didn't think about it so another part of sports hypnosis which is not just sports hypnosis it can be a wider field but I'm going to throw it in there anyways as a bonus is writing down what you want in, 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 in your sports hypnosis whether that's that you want to win all your games this year or you want to win 50% more of your games your matches your fights this year um, that you want to be faster at your 40 minute sprint by excuse me your 40 meter sprint by 0 0.0 seconds whether you want to drop five pounds of fat whether you want to bicep curl an extra 20 pounds write this shit down in a place that you get to see every single day so it starts it's more pings it's more pings it might just be passively i just saw this stuff passively written on my wall i wasn't reading it out every day but those little pings conscious unconscious pings each day made it more inclined to happen sports hypnosis is very very powerful again to summarize you got to play, you got to do the drills to get the skills. So if you're a tennis, you've got to hit the ball, you've got to have games. If it's MMA, you've got to roll in the cage, roll on the mats. If it's football or hockey or basketball, you've got to be on your field, you've got to be doing that practice. Absolutely nothing beats that. However, a side caveat to that is I can't remember the exact study, so I may slightly misquote this, so please forgive me. Um, Remember, send your hate mail to mail at lucnosis.com. Um, but they did a study, and the study was they took a group of basketball players and they practiced every day for 30 minutes, I think, every day. And they took a bunch of people that were basketball players but couldn't play for one month, and they asked them for 20 minutes a day just simply visualizing hitting the three points, hitting the two point shots. And then they when the 30 days or so was up they came in and ended up I think they played one another and what happened was the team that had just visualized i believe ended up winning or ended up getting a higher skill level than the, than the team that had just practiced every day actually i'm going to sidestep i think there was three teams there was a, there was one group of people that just visualized there was one group that just played and there was one group that played and visualized and the group that played and visualized killed the other two teams um and so it just shows you the power of combining the mental aspect with the physical aspect how powerful it can be we know other athletes have been using this for many years ones that i've already mentioned that come to mind tiger woods famous golfer steve collins the uh, famous super middleweight boxing champion of ireland nba players uh, avanda holyfield very famous legendary boxer talking about self hypnosis and um Many, many other uh, tremendous athletes like Chuck Liddell, former UFC legendary, UFC light heavyweight champion, would work with Tony Robbins. And I know Tony Robbins calls it something else, but we know what it truly is when you take away the marketing machine behind it. Um, it is very, very powerful. It's next level. And, and, and oftentimes when, when athletes do get to that level, they realize to get that edge. It's not about just getting another physical skill because we've pretty much maxed out our physical skill, but we've got to get our mind in the gear. And that's when they'll hire a sports hypnotist that will come in there and will help them to work through that using skills and goals, visualization, time distortion. Yeah, they did a study with, um, I believe, Richard Bandler talks about it in Time to Change, about hypnotizing uh, N was it major league baseball mlb players in america and when he would work with them he would distort time and he would make the ball um the uh, the actual what do you call it it's the baseball yeah they'll make the baseball about the size of a big beach ball or a swiss ball that you'd see at a gym and it would be half the time so when it would be coming at them in practice in their minds and they were unconscious it was the size of a swiss ball or a huge beach ball and it would be coming half the time oh and their racket was twice the size, so they would hit it every time and the success went through the roof um, in Tony Robbins book I believe it's Unlimited Power or Awaken the Giant Within he talks about a study uh, with NLP uh, in the late 70s early 80s where they went out and they trained a bunch of Marx people, Marxmen uh, Marxmen, Marx women out there 
and they modeled their behavior to shoot guns they demystified it they decoded it and learned to use those same strategies with new recruits and um, the the skill level or the pass rate of the marksman school uh, went up exponentially um, Tony Robbins likes to take credit for it and then Richard Banner I think and John Grinnell will like to take credit for it as well so I, I don't know if they were all together or independently did it but it seemed that there was a study there was a modeling of Marx people around about that time in with somebody in the hypnosis or neurolinguistic programming community but it just goes to show that the skills in sports hypnosis and I'm going to pull it under that umbrella are very effective and help to get you that new edge so to give you some summarization a sports hypnosis is great for helping you to get into that flow state that if you do miss a shot you do miss a punch you do miss a play you can pull yourself completely out of that negative emotion and get back into your game plan it's also good for creating anchors in the middle of the game to just get you back into that peak state of how you need to be to perform and even if that peak state is is being somewhat neutral allowing you to get out of your own way giving you little hacks little things to do with your breathing and your body to enable you to play your best game fight your best fight have your best match when you're out there because remember folks when there's two equal athletes with equal physical skills it's the one whose mental game is at a high level who's most likely going to dominate and most likely going to win so I have been HypnoPunk. This has been another episode of Unstuck Transformation of Edge. If you like the show, fantastic. Um, and if you hate the show, please feel free to send your hate mail to mail at lukenosis.com. Also, if you'd like a copy of the five ways to become unstuck in your health, a little ebook that I've put together, then please again shoot me an email at mail at lukenosis.com and I'll fire that off to you. Just say, Luke, I want a copy of that five ways to become unstuck in my health and I will send that off to you. Always believe. Whoa.